Monday. Hey, okay. it's uh, six o'clock on Tuesday, uh, April 13th. I'm going to call the Public Works Committee to order. Um, call the roll. We have Mr. Bellins here and Mrs. Stoffers here, and yeah. I'm here. Seems to be the other committee. Also in attendance is uh, Mrs. Walker, Mr. Carr, Mrs. McFerrin, uh, Amy, Chris, Mayor, Sarah, Law Director, the whole crew. Wow. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm sure there's no audience participation. I don't see any audience. Um, I don't see how you're appointing a chair view. Yeah. So I'll do that right now. I'll just, I'm going to on the agenda and I'll just take a nomination for chair. Yeah, I'll nominate Mr. Scafidi. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Should we take a recess for cake and the <laughs> 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 come through the hallway? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, public works. Yes, <clears throat> that's Chris. You're on. We're gonna talk about service garage and the salt dome study. Okay, so no. we've, we've uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Um, so we've been wow. We've been talking a little bit about service service garage, um, and along with that, we've been a lot of discussions about salt dome. So when you look at the replacement of the service garage, there's a lot of things to look at. It, starting with the location where it is now. There's really, it, boy, it would be really hard the way things sit right now to expand that building. We, we just don't have the physical space. With that said though, um, we're not actually sure exactly what the square footage is that we need. Um, you know, you're looking at, we do a lot of vehicle maintenance um, you know, we've, we've got uh, a wood shop, we've got a sign shop, we've got a uh, lunchroom that we, we build ourselves. We don't have any, any area for the employees, no locker rooms, no. I mean, you can go on and on uh, with what we need. Um, what, what I would like to do is have an engineering firm kind of do a study on this and kind of determine what our needs are. I mean, we can sit down and say, we've got a sign shop and it does this volume of work and, you know, just go through everything. I think uh, the, um, the vehicle maintenance area probably should triple in size. I mean, it's just, you know, so at, at this point, I think we need to study it and find out what we need. And I think what could happen is once you find out what that is, they may tell us it won't fit in that area. Where, where we sit now. Where we go from there, I, I don't know. So, but we really, at this point, can't identify what size building we need and all of that. I think we really need to study it. Can I, I just want to throw something out there, Chris. You know, I'm, I'm doing this in like local building search plan. And I know we're a lot smaller. But instead of paying an engineering firm, we just went out for RFQs for an architectural firm. Okay. <coughs> And over there, we chose Ari Warner. We okay. built several, several service projects. And so, um, and we sat down with them and told them what our needs were, just like you had needs. Mm -hmm. You know, we told them what we had. You know, they, they, they saw what we currently operate out of. And they, you know, and their experience really was, has been just like a wealth of knowledge for the facility that we're building. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that makes sense here or not to, you know, bypass the engineering part of it. I mean, because well, that's why I'm saying you're going to pay study. for that, and then you're going to pay an architectural firm afterwards. You know, anyway. Right. I think you're probably talking about the same thing. You just want someone else, hire someone else to kind of tell us what we need and if we can fit it there. To sit somebody, so, you know, sit with yeah. us, somebody yeah. that knows, yeah, and say, here's, you know, because I can't tell you if we need a thousand square feet. Or a million square feet. Mm -hmm. You know, once we describe the different mm -hmm. needs, they can put that all together. And and I think yeah, I, I think a study is. Pro I mean, that's probably what you're doing, right? They're studying the needs. Yeah. Well, they sat down with us and we mm -hmm. told them what our needs yeah. were, how many vehicles I had, 
you know, how many I'm going to have, what do I want undercover, what do I, can I leave outside, right. you know, just the whole operation, how many, how many employees, do we need mm -hmm. showers, do we need this, do we, what do you need? Right. And they put that whole thing together and, you know, if you look at, you know, at their RFQ, I mean, when you looked at their, their experience and their background, they've built several service garages, that's mm -hmm. kind of their thing. Yeah. And so they built from small, like we're doing, to larger, that's your thing. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So they've been a big help to us, and we've had several meetings. We sat down, right. and you know, um, I've looked at it. We tweaked things here and there, and uh -huh. um, they've done a really nice job. I, so yeah. I don't know if that would work yeah. here. Or not. And you know, we we've been talking a little bit about this, and we we kind of realized after talking about it that we have as many needs on the outside of the building too. Right now, we don't have good storage for material storage. Yeah, right. mulch and, and stone and mm -hmm. sand and, and, and what have you. We, we really don't have anything like that. We don't have any outside storage of equipment or vehicles. I mean, so that's the scary part. I think when you start studying this and you look at your overall needs, the existing footprint, I, I, I don't think is adequate. Mm -hmm. So, okay, where does that take us? I, I don't know. So, one thing I hate to see for you is that it's like you've got a campus down there. And mm -hmm. You've got the wastewater there, and you've got your service department there, and you've got everybody together. It works. That would be a shame for you know that to be in a different location. Yeah, it's a lot on you, but you you're running around back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Basically, but I mean, it, yeah, I think that I mean I like the school campuses that we've got going here and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, I think that's that's really nice, and mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, maybe in the future with with Dodge what their plans are and I don't know if there's ever any opportunity to you know get into that property yeah, I, was, I would if you could do that and go in that direction I would love that that would yeah. be perfect yeah that, I, there was a, that would be a good thing or even like from where your office is if we could come forward mm -hmm. you know so you bring your service garage out to where your office is and then you put in bring your office there, there's a lot of property right there yeah. even if mm -hmm. we could secure that little mm -hmm. whatever they use it for soccer yeah. football mm -hmm. um, I don't know yeah, I think I think the school, the direction I think the school is going is away from the Dodge land and to have more of a campus atmosphere with some of the things study that they did showing um, more of connection to the high school land and Chamberlain and all that. So mm -hmm. I, there, I mean, there was you know a mention of the possible availability of of that Dodge property, um, but again, I don't know how far off. The school is from from doing some of that so yeah yeah I don't know. But, yeah, yeah. That, go ahead, oh, well, you go ahead. Okay. no I was gonna say that would be ideal though if we you know yeah. could take even the land where the current Dodge if they're not going to build a new school you know take that land and have that whole area to mm -hmm. to, to oh, build yeah. something but yeah so I do have a question, Chris. Um, are there, do you know of firms that actually they're, they've designed, like, you know, engineering firms that design this? Or do, do you have some in mind, like, that you know of that, that just design, you know, go through that process with you? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we, like Sam says, there's, there's there, um, architectural firms. I've been working with Burgess of Naples that does a lot of mm -hmm. municipal things. They're, they're doing a couple studies mm -hmm. for me over at the wastewater plant. Right. And they've done some of these projects too. So there's people yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, but I think Sam's right. It's one of those things where you think you know everything that you yeah. need, but when you work with a firm like this, we'll yeah. say, you know, open well, and oh I, my goodness. Yeah. And I think that was, that's kind of where my concern is, is um, if there's a, an architectural firm that is an expert in this field, because you know, when we built the clubhouse, we have like little tweaks that we we hired an architectural firm. But there's little tweaks when you talk to them that they wish we you know, we had slanted the floor, done little things that somebody who had designed a restaurant would have known. We didn't know to ask or to have that done. So even though you know you, we can come in with the questions, um, somebody who has been who has designed these already probably have. What I'm saying is, what you don't know what you don't know. Right. And. Right. If they come in and they might have suggestions that never even occurred to, yeah. to some, you guys have a ton of experience between the two of you, but yeah. I just. We, what well, yeah. we've done in the past too, we've visited some, if you're looking uh, at, at uh, signing with a firm, 
they'll show you, you know, another building that they've done, something similar. I don't yeah. know if you visited any other service. I did. I visited uh, Woodmere. I visited uh, Brentnell. Uh, I visited a few that are more our size. Yeah. 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 And you can see what they did. We did yeah. the same thing uh, with engineering firms for the wastewater plant. Right. And we got very, very, very lucky. We had Finkbeiner, Pettis, and Stroud, who later became Arcadis. They did all of the plans for our wastewater treatment plant. And they were amazing, and I mean that's what they did. I mean you, you need to you know you need to find somebody that does that. Right, right. They yeah. You know, so yeah, right. But, yeah, you know. it's, it's, I know it needs. It's we've been talking about this for twelve years. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I know it's needed. That's yeah, it's definitely needed. We know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yep. Yeah. So I think the other thing is the salt dome. Yeah. It, and it's the same thing. Um, it's where do we put it? I mean, we need it, but where do we put it? So. Yeah, I think that's one of the things. I mean, talk about discussions. I mean, every mayor's association, every uh, service director, mayor's meeting that we go to, I mean, that seems to, like, dominate the conversation is mm -hmm. salt and acquiring salt and what we're paying for salt and where we're putting salt. And, you know, right. now we're the, we didn't use as much salt and now we got to buy salt that we don't have a place to put. And it's just, it goes on and on every single year. Yeah. So we're putting a thousand tons right now over at the wastewater plant because mm -hmm. we just didn't meet our quota, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, so it, you know, we could double, triple the capacity we have and it would, would help us. But again, that, once you want that, like from your, where your, your service route is going to be located eventually, wouldn't that dictate where you put new salt from? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you could, there. Mm -hmm. you could put it somewhere yeah. else if you had property, you know, out in the system somewhere, but um, I think you'd prefer to have it where it, at your main location. Right. right. Because you've got your loader there and, and everything. Okay. So, um, I think with this whole thing, um, location is, is one of the big things. And I, I think we need to get something established design-wise, size-wise, so that we can say, okay, does it stay here? Does it uh, try to get some property from Dodge? You know, what yeah. do we do? So. What do we use this year, Salt? Less than 4,000 tons. Yeah. What are you asking for in your that contract? How much did you request? Five. Sorry. Five. Five, five thousand. Five thousand, yeah. Our normal was seven thousand for yeah. a number of years. I would count so Yeah. Yeah. The events are less, and I mean, our spread rate was a little bit different too over the last couple of years. So we, you know, we we've made some adjustments in our yeah. practices, but mm -hmm. boy, it's just been great winners lately yeah. too. Mm -hmm. so I'm always afraid that big one's going to come though. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I went up a little bit this year. Did you? Year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a thousand tons I could sell you. <laughs> right now, I got a thousand tons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could have. I could have. Yeah. Um, yeah, before to that point. Um, so, yeah, before Chris leaves, I wanted to talk about uh, a couple of things. I think we've been, you guys have been, been kept up to date on the crossings on Liberty so I know that's just getting materials in uh, waiting on that we're looking at maybe mid-May something like that yeah it's probably going to be mid-May mid -May. we just um, talked on today yeah availability because they're going to come out on site and oversee our installation of it okay so. yeah no I think the presidents will appreciate that yeah, uh, for how sure. that's going to look and work uh, second is I know Joanne and I talked today and I know you two talked today so we uh, the Post Road, where um, the old White House oh, was, do do uh, that was taken do do down. Um, do Joanne's been witnessing people you know like parking in yeah. there. I yeah. assume to use the trails, and uh, there's not much Thanks space at all for them Thank to you. really turn around Thank and you. do anything. So the only assumption we can make is that they're backing out onto onto 91 to to try to get out, um, which you know could be okay, could be dangerous. So. Um, you know, it was brought up by joining the day of whether we want to invest anything into that particular area, um, whether it be minimal of, you know, uh, scraping and throwing grindings down, um, you know, but or anything else. But um, so I thought it would just just be a good forum to kind of bring it up tonight to talk about it. Um, so. Well, I know at one point we had talked about um, like a trailhead there yeah. too, right? Yeah. Is that have we? I, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there, and I think 
the trailhead, I think, is, is ultimately what we'd love to to see there, mm -hmm. um, designed right and and you know budgeted for sure. and, and done all that. So I, you know, this is something kind of coming into the season of people using those trails. Um, we don't have the budget, and you know, I know Chris is scrambling. He's got a couple new guys we brought on. He's got a couple that are starting staggered in May. Um, and that you know, grass is growing like crazy right now, so they're pretty swamped. But, yeah, but uh, you know, at least I want to have a conversation about you know maybe doing something minimal this year if there was something. I raised um, twenty eight hundred dollars for trailheads uh -huh. on my fundraiser, and sitting at the front of the park, in front of the parks, mm -hmm. you know, help out the little girl. I could raise more money if you want. Just saying, it's for trailheads. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure how far that would go, but I think, um, yeah, I'm just kind of opening it up. I just, you know, it hasn't been really on our, our radar to do anything yeah. this year. Um, I mean, from a safety standpoint, we could throw a couple of hood egg stones across the driveway and just keep people out of there for right now. That or, would work. Or something, you know, until we design something properly. Um, it's probably better than yeah. 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 I mean, then I mean, expending expending resources, time, labor, yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of stuff into doing yeah. something that we may not like or work on. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think ultimately, I'd like to see a you know a trailhead in a parking lot and you know that kind of thing. But in, short of that, yeah. I have no idea how much that's going to cost. I think closing it off, just from a safety perspective, is probably. Okay. All right. that's, we, that's, is that an easier we, route? We had talked that. about yeah. using okay. uh, yeah. the, we'll the parking lot over that. by the gardens because yeah. it yeah, connects. Yeah, we can put food stones yeah. in the And just having this the, as grass yeah. and okay. maybe a bicycle rack. Sure. Yeah. 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 All right. I thought you yeah, Just, again, from a state, it's probably the quickest. Yeah, yeah we, we can get it closed yeah. off right away. Okay. All right. Okay. And the last thing you, the, I mean, the last thing you want is for somebody to get slammed yeah. backing out on 91 there. Yeah, I, mean, I think when we designed that trailhead, we had conversations about where certain curb cuts would be yeah. to make it safe as possible, and yeah. that's a little bit of Amy's world, and Chris's world, and everything. So mm -hmm. I think you know maybe if we think we want to do that next year, we can talk about trying to design something the, the right way to do it. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. We'll get it closed off for the time being. Okay. Anything else, Chris? Can I? I'll, I'll have to call you and get that information from the firm that you were working okay. with. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Chris, real, thank you. Real quick, I'm Thanks. sorry. You said it'd be mid mid May before the crosswalks are in on Liberty. Is that? That's right. Okay. All right. I think it's the 17th. Okay. That they're shooting for uh, for the company to be out there. Okay. Gary flipped on the year. So we were All shooting right. for a little bit earlier, but uh, Gary flipped has got to be there for the install. So he's on okay. vacation the first week. So their next availability is the 17th. Okay. I think that's yeah. Monday, so. okay. You'll okay. So we should go back there at that point. All right. All right. Appreciate you. Thanks, Chris. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> next to me. Come on down. Project updates. You made a great decision on that uh, parking lot because if you went off the property, you, we have a lot more coordination to do. So closing it down went, went well. It's a very uh, narrow oh, lot. On one, yeah, and the way we acquired the other property has a lot more coordination on there. Yeah. I would have brought that up if it became an issue when you guys were discussing. So um, it's been a couple of years with COVID and everything since I presented to kind of a project update. Um, so I'm going to go through, I, I kind of give you a packet, go through kind of the projects that may have appeared on that, where we stand on different things, some different funding that we're looking at, future projects, and some, some things that I, I need some action on. So what I want to do, the first is uh, kind of an update on, on some ODOT projects. Um, very pleased that they completed the culvert under 480, uh, 91 area. Um, so I'm hoping that will be like, I think it was one of the last places we put up the high water sign. Um, for the most part on, on storm events. So very pleased with that. ODOT also does our bridge municipal um, bridge program for inspections, which has created a project that we'll be awarding tonight. Um, we also have the, the ODOT comes in and does bridge inspections on State Route 91 and 82, and the county comes in and does the county bridges, which are on some of the county roads. Um, what I can see for a future uh, project with ODOT is their urban paving program. Uh, would be the section of 82 uh, south of Cannon Road heading out of the city. Um, probably needs to get on their five to eight year horizon. Um, we probably would want to issue a letter 82. to them. Mm -hmm. South of Cannon. So that's the piece of shop? Uh, the section of 82. So once you head south, uh, it's actually part of Ravenna Road. East Aurora Road, East Aurora Road is 82. There's a section of Ravenna Road in between those two names, which is actually State Route 82. Um, that section would be the next section. 
would be about five to, to eight years out for resurfacing. ODOT has an urban paving program because it's a state route. Uh, it would be an 80-20 split. They typically do the, it's either 80-20 or 90-10. They take the project, they do the project, and it's built. And, yeah, and then we just pay them. But we want to get on their 10-year plan or their horizon for uh, that five to seven. We did that years ago. Everybody asked me when we were going to resurface 91. I said, well, that's already programmed because we thought ahead and we got it programmed. So we just want to make sure we get on their programming list because they, they do look a little further in the future than we do with all their funds because they have so many funds. So. Um, uh, my issue is probably to get in contact with them with a letter saying, hey, we'd be interested in, you know, that about seven years out paving that section of road or, or as it becomes in need based on their rankings so that we uh, get in their schedule and acquire those. So that's what I'm talking about for 1482. Uh, the other thing they're still working on, White Oak Drive, um, ramp uh, opened up in the last week here. This, the sound wall, this project is a long time in the making. They're currently still on uh, 480 doing the Gettysburg Wall. This is just a map kind of reminding where the locations. I have been getting calls from people asking, you know, where it's put in. I don't know if you guys are as well. Uh, update on the, the 2021 road program. Uh, we combine that with sidewalks, pet spaces, and everything all into one due to manpower and staffing issues. Just so you know, we began that program on the 5th of April. Uh, we're a good 20% into the sidewalks. Uh, probably even at the end of the week, we'll probably be about 40 to 50% done with sidewalks and catch basins. We do get a lot of calls on that. You may be getting calls on that as well as we do sidewalks throughout the neighborhood. It is the sidewalks are basically reviewed by the service department, which generates a list, and then it gets so it's years out. So um, if you get any calls or questions on that, um, refer them to service for a review to see if it's cities or, or uh, other responsibilities. <coughs> when we are moving into the resurfacing, which is uh, the next phase would be the Davis Way, Darien, Sharon Court, Sterling Court, Windsor Way, Granby Circle, and Ansonia. Uh, that would be basically uh, starting sometime in May, running through June. Then we'd move to Commons Boulevard, Maryville Drive, Lockwood Oval, Pine Ridge Drive. Um, in July, I believe, is when we're looking at doing the railroad crossings um, on, on uh, Cannon and State Route 82. Uh, we still have some coordination detour routes and, and things, as well as the railroad and the contractor making sure all that coordination comes together because it does require a road closure for one week. Um, while they rip out the crossing, reset the crossing, we pay. And in July. Yeah, that's what we're looking at roughly. I don't have the exact dates or schedule, but that's kind of where it's kind of fitting into the program. Um, striping, we're still working on uh, getting the contracts executed. We're hoping that will be striped in June. Again, we haven't striped in over a year. Um, glass beads are not as prevalent in the, in the paint, which makes nighttime visibility a little bit uh, tougher. Uh, we're working on the tree program. We expect to have that finalized in July so we can bid it in August. It's mainly uh, the uh, commercial, uh, the um, subdivision areas, but we do have a list. So if you have anybody with concerns, they can email me their address, and we can check that out for them. Is there a spring um, planting? Uh, the the we would end up doing a, a fall of twenty one, spring of twenty two in that in okay. that contract. Correct. So we did not. We're not. We have not done. We are not doing the spring twenty one. No. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting in a lot of those developments. Uh, we're hoping lawns get in this spring because they just finished Whispering Woods, I think, in December. Um, so we want to, you know, get as big of a package as we can put together. Maybe the street program, does that include um, treating of those trees? Uh, that is separate, and the PO was put in last fall for that. Oh. And um, I did have correspondence twice with uh, Noel Municipal Forestry. Um, there's a certain temperature and the certain, the leaves have to leaf out on them, uh, but we're work into their schedule to get that done. So that will be thank you. Amy, I have a question about the tree lot, the trees that they're planting tree lots. I'm noticing they're getting so big they're running into the wires. Is that I mean how does that uh, the if they're if they're running into the electrical wires they will eventually get pruned. We try and put a small, medium or large based on where you're at. Okay. Uh, the lifespan of a, a street tree is not necessarily the lifespan of what an other tree would be. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to take them out associated with their causing damage to utilities in the ground or they're, you know, they get pruned or trimmed associated with work. Most of the time if it's growing into the lowest line is typically your or that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't do too much as far as trimming around there. It's when it gets within 10 feet of the electric line that you start seeing some of the pruning. And they do prune in the city, the, um, some of those Does trees. the city do that or no. does the electric company? That's the electric company. Okay. 
Yeah, because yeah. there I've seen it all. Some of these trees are getting huge, and they're growing right around. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so now we come to the new projects and or, or things that we're working on. So um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a potential new sidewalk project. Um, this has come about associated with the review of uh, planning at the corner of Summer Commerce Park and State Route 91 that Planning Commission approved with sidewalks. Uh, Mr. Finch was petitioned to ins have the city install those as an assessment project. Um, on, Summer Com on uh, Summer Commerce Park, there's a small section of sidewalk that was put in a number of years ago to service that kind of, it's a complex of one business down there that uses that. Uh, so this would affect about five parcels, about 2,200 linear feet, uh, estimated about uh, $280,000 to do that project. Um, but as an assessment project, it requires a number of processes to do that. Uh, the first process to start that in motion would be basically to determine that we want to move forward and to direct me to go ahead and clear the plans and specs so I need to go out and get a survey and spend money to do that. I'd come back and we do a resolution necessity, which would basically start the whole assessment process, and then there's 20 steps in between from that point on. So, um, so I don't necessarily need a motion here. If you want more discussion on this, Mr. Finch is on vacation this week, so I wasn't able to present more as far as the, the issues there. But um, I'll try and answer the question as best I can. So when we do an assessment, is it like a 20 year lien on a property? It's however we set the assessment up. It can be a 10 year assessment. Um, in the past, we've done 20 years for sanitary and sewer work. That's the only thing I've dealt with really with assessment projects in the city. Um, we have not done a sidewalk assessment project in the past. Uh, Mr. Finch also indicated that he's possible to uh, could get some um, community block grant funding. Um, it's also possible to, uh, if we wanted to apply this fall to Pertassa funding through AMAX, uh, being that it's a, a work area, an area of high concentration of um, businesses that basically people are bust in and mobility associated with that. I think you've noticed people on that corner, people walking in the street around there. Um, so, so that's the concern there. So currently. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll wait. My only concern is, and I, you know, I think it's a great idea, but we've had so many residents asking for sidewalks in their neighborhoods. And now we're going to look at something that we've all heard when I said I'm planning. I mean, it was obvious that well, nobody uses those sidewalks. Why, why are we making the daycare put in sidewalks? And he says, we walk there, nobody's there, nobody's around. Well, it's for the future, okay? So now we're looking at doing sidewalks, and I understand it's an assessment, um, but maybe we ought to give these residents. I know um, on Shepherd Road, they, they would love sidewalks there. They're As, uh, being assessed? Out. Pardon me? And being assessed Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, all things being equal. I mean, because I mean, you that's and I paid for our sidewalks. Because we're assessing right. this, and that's the only thing that's our safety net. That, you know, okay, if you want sidewalks, well, we'll do them and assess you as well, hmm. or else or not. But, you know, I just, I, I see that argument coming eventually. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's reasonable. If, they, if well, that yeah. group wants I mean, to at this stage of the game, if they, because it's an assessment, if they if they want to treat it equally, either hand. And, but if we don't um, assess this right now, we're not putting the property owner has to put, them to them put, put these on. Our money back, and we can do yours as well. To get our money back. We can't afford to just go ahead and start putting in sidewalks. And I think that's where that's going to go. I, I, I feel like I'm going to get a couple calls and know that. Right. But, but if we don't well, assess. There will be sidewalks around the new daycare, correct? Talk to Mr. Finch. And it is there, a requirement on the. Well, I, mean, I know what the planning commission said. Yeah, yeah there there's going to be sidewalks around the, around the daycare. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's whether we help him fund them long term with a, an assessment, right. or whether he just outright pays for them. And again, there was a delta on what he thought they were were going to cost and what we thought they were going to cost. Because you did. Right. I think ultimately he decided right. he wanted us what, to do it. What, what did you think it was worth? 30 or a 40, 40 something, and then he was saying he, he was coming in at like 100 and something. I think. Yeah. yeah, he was coming he up with a real high yeah. number, 800. Yeah. And so we said, Well, right. you know, we can, it could be in terms of what I'm talking about, we're talking about 2,200. I got uh, linear feet, which is way more than what he has right there. Yeah, and I'm talking 280, and that That's includes in that estimate, yeah. I have to include things like advertising, my survey and plan prep. 
uh, inspection services, the assessor costs, all that goes into the project costs. So, right. um, and then I played prevailing wages and all that other stuff associated with um, how it all works. So, yes. Julia. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily cheap for us to put yeah, it Yeah, Larry was right. looking at getting Dave looks like a ghost getting thing. getting money to potentially yeah, like fund this project. Right. I mean, that was you know I don't okay. think I don't think Amy's coming here asking us to commit to two hundred eighty grand of sidewalk installation, you know, I think what right. we're Well, and it wouldn't necessarily be asking for the commitment, and if it goes to an assessment, in terms of what we've got going here. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to know direction on this, because there is um, some issues that basically, I think you're, with that, that individual on the corner, they're in the process of completing out that site, uh, as far as um, what's going to happen with the sidewalk. Uh, so so I guess that's why I'm at, is what's the timeline? That guy's got his plans approved and he's going to start building that building. It's uh -huh. right there. Yeah. Oh. The, si mm -hmm. the, the sidewalks are a requirement under right. that. Right. Land commission requirement. I was going to say, that, I don't so, know what the wiggle room is on that. Yeah. From what I understand, it was a, it was a requirement. So. It, it, that's my understanding. So, okay. But, um, you know, I, I don't you need know an that's occupancy the permit to, go to, to start that business, right? So, Sam, the only area that you know that, that I'm trying to think who doesn't have sidewalks. It's just Shepherd Road? Is it just Shepherd? That's a concern that I've heard. Okay. And I used to hear them in the, in the acres, but. Right. They right. typically have sidewalks on one side of their street. Well, right. Not both. So this is, I mean, just preparing the assessment for it. I mean, no, it's, it yeah. is. Yeah. The project is a lot of work. It's a small dollar to do an assessment, but. Um, it does, I know that the issue has been brought up in the past about that area and the number of people that are coming off the buses. So I'm sure that's why Planning Commission also, you know, required the sidewalks yeah. to be implemented there as well. So Yeah, you're going to have yeah. probably quite a bit of controversy either way. Because if you put in sidewalks, yeah, success, you got to you got to do it for everyone whether they want the sidewalks or not. Yeah. You know, or want to pay for the sidewalks or not? Right. So you're going to have a lot right. of people can't really upset. Sidewalks. That's the thing. Everything right. I have to. Have no, you have to. Well, we did yeah, a trail yeah, for Chamberlain, do, but we used grant money for that. But it was an asphalt trail, right. not sidewalks. Correct. It connected the sidewalks. It connected. Yeah. Shepherd Road is just not connected to anything. Mm -hmm. You know, until you get up to that new uh, development yeah. there. And then you can get to Lake Plata, I think. There's right. Like there. Well, actually, I think that's a cul-de-sac. No, I think that, that new thing, isn't it just a cul -de -sac, a long cul-de-sac, yeah, and then Lake Plata is the next one? You walk from there. Oh, the walk, plant. yes. You can't yeah. go the other way. OK. There's no sidewalks on either side. Well, the other side's in so don't have Right. That's another headache, because yeah. their mailboxes are across the street, and their address is Macedonia, and they're in Twinsburg. <laughs> they don't like that. Either. Well, well, that's what Macedonia has to fix that problem. Randy spent it three months down in yeah, South Carolina yeah, so anyway. He shouldn't be that angry about this anymore. Who's that? Randy Roberts? <laughs> Is that the guy? Yeah. <laughs> that was the golf of the guy. Do you want it? He told me that way back when no. he talked about McDermott. Let's get this done. I, I tried. I mean, you know, it's not Bob's. It wasn't his fault. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, so I guess if you could, you know, maybe uh, further discussion in two more weeks at Committee of the Whole or something when Mr. Fitch is coming. No, I'm just saying, yeah, I yeah. Just if want you want to everybody move forward. just be prepared because I think that we may hear that when they hear that. If we don't do anything, well, right. they're still going to put sidewalks in around the building. They, they have to, as right. far as I know. Right. Yeah. So, so if there's sidewalks there, do we, can you assess them after the fact and add them to the program? No, they would not be assessed for their sidewalks they put in. But that was something they, they suggested. No, the, 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 what, what I'm saying is, yeah. the, what I'm saying is, we did talk about assessing them for the sidewalks, and I, not my question was, so if they put the sidewalks in, are they able to then have the city assess them anyway? So they they put them in, get refunded. The thirty grand and pay it back to us. No, that's no? not how no, assessment no. project no. works. Now, the, the issue came up, if I could, the, the issue came up when we were talking about this with, with Larry was that if, if we're going to do this, we're missing the middle piece. The end piece has sidewalks, daycare would have sidewalks, the whole, everything in between, the, I think the two properties would not. They're already built out. We can't go and force them to do it because we don't, they're not in front of us or they're not in front of planning. The idea was to do an assessment for the whole length of it. 
That way we get them all connected with sidewalks from beginning to end. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just, you know. And, and at the time that, that the daycare was being built, that was one of the options when he realized he was going to have to build the sidewalks and pay for it. One of the requests was, can I be assessed? And I think that was one of the discussions we had with council as an option to pay for it. We just don't think it makes sense to do it just for one. We might as well do the whole project. That so makes sense. The bottom for the Death's Canal property, too, where they're behind CVS, where they're going to put that spec building. I'm talking about connecting those the all the way over there. They, planning Commission, has been talking about sidewalks on all those projects. Okay. Yeah, they've been putting them in more and more in the industrial areas. We have sidewalks or a trail that will go in the front of the Cornerstone property, as well as sidewalks in the Cornerstone property. We have sidewalks in front of the new uh, car wash. I mean, and they don't really go. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we've been trying to fill in as development is current. You know, you just can't have complete all at once. So. Well, we should. But, so, I guess what I'd be looking for is maybe think about this, come back at committee hall and get it on the agenda for two weeks and make a decision one way or the other. So, the construction that's underway can either progress the way it needs to or... Um, they know what they need to do up there based on what we're going to do. So. Okay. 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 So now I'm just going to talk about some of the infrastructure in general, and, and, and I know money is a big cost and things of whatever we've kind of hit on, touched on the road program needing more funding. Uh, I just kind of gave you a table there that shows if you look at 1980. Um, we only had 87 linear, uh, 87,000, whatever, 87, I think this is in uh, lane miles um, in the city. Um, if that was basically, now we're basically double that. Uh, we have over 190. So if we spent 250,000, which we probably did, I just kind of went back to 1980 and the SMR fund was over 300,000. It was the money earmarked, a separate fund earmarked for 91. So we spent well over um, 250000 So doubling that would say, OK, today it cost us $500,000 to do a roof firm. Just with the inflationary factor, just using the consumer price index, we're at one6 So very in line with how my calculations have all pretty much um, shown you. So I just That's reiterate okay. expect that in future, future planning and budget levels. Um, the water line, we're uh, still working on transatlantic pipe. Um, if you listen to the infrastructure bills that are going on and the discussion at the federal level, we're talking about um, lead pipes. We don't, from, as far as we know, and you can tell from projects we have done, we have cast iron water line, which does have um, some leaded uh, joints associated with the African, some of those works, but we, as far as we can tell, any of the service connections to the house, because we've dug up in some of these streets, are copper service connections, so we don't have the lead service connections. So I don't see us being a high priority in that. I kind of look at some of the streets. They're not necessarily streets we're ready to do right now, but you factor in mind that is some of the infrastructure funding that would be coming out, and then we have a lot of ductile iron, um, which is in good shape in the city. Um, sanitary sewer, we've been working on those again with projects. Um, uh, we still have some clay pipes, some lining in the downstairs area. You're going to see that in a minute. I'm going to address, at least start addressing that. We do have stuff in the 10 year plan that you'll see there. And then storm sewers. Um, we've done a lot with storm water over the last 20 years as far as drainage. We started presentation of ODOT icing on the cake, which is, I was happy to see that project going. Uh, so about seven years ago, we looked at corrugated metal pipes and we started looking at it again because we've got some issues. Um, with a last year with a sinkhole, so we wanted to, to address that. So one of the things we were looking at, and I know it was touched on a little bit in finance committee, was um, starting to study what our storm sewer system actually looks like in the ground. You know, we can we look at catch basins, um, repair catch basins in our program. We can see those. We can visually inspect those. Um, we look at major inlets and outlets of pipes that we know. Um, sensitive areas that could become blocks, service department does a run of those types of things. But we don't have extra vision and we don't see inside the pipes. Um, so what we're really concerned with is as our system ages, is being able to see what's going on inside the pipes. We have those discharge cross connections, root intrusions, uh, or other deterioration that we're just unaware of 
because you, you don't have very good inventory. So um, we'd like to start with a simple process of starting to take a look at that. Take about $50,000, um, start doing some videotaping, cleaning and inspection, and moving through the city in a, in a fashion. But what we do know if we start doing that is we'll probably come up with projects that need to be done associated with what we find. Um, so I know it was kind of broached a little bit um, uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of wanting to know where your, your feelings go with that. And, and before we get to your discussion, I went at, wanted to hit on the NPDES um, general stormwater permit. Okay, there's uh, basically, y'all know what that is. You know, I don't know what that is. I, I brought it to you a number of times. This is your formal education on it. Uh, basically requires public education, outreach, public, public participation, illicit discharge detection elimination, which you just heard me say a second ago, uh, construction site runoff, post-construction runoff, and pollution prevention, good house, keep you municipal operations. There's a couple things occurring with that. There is a new permit out. Um, this is a 56 page roughly permit that has a lot of criteria. That criteria is starting to really narrow or drill in to elicit discharge, dis elicit detect detection and elimination. Drill in on that and some other things as far as the system and knowing your system. Um, we do a fair number of those things, and that's just going to continue to tighten with each every four years with the round of permit. So having a good handle and starting to do this is, is probably uh, a reason that we're looking at. The other thing going on with that permit is Summit County issued us a letter uh, at the beginning of uh, March. Basically, talk. We're a co-committee with that. We share our permit with 26 other communities. It, it saves us money on the permit end. We, we sit down. We have what's called a pipe meeting, where we basically um, don't have to reinvent the wheel for everything we do associated with the permit. Um, it's looking like the EPO, although it likes the joint permit, has problems with the way the permit is administered and who's legal, who, what legal rights Summit County has associated with it. So they're looking at possibly what this new round of permit is saying, you have two options. You can go out on your own and handle you know, your own permitting and everything on your own. And I don't mean we be completely on the island. We still have our connection with Summit Swell Water and with the health district and Peter Creek Watershed. Um, and their option number two talks about uh, joining their stormwater watershed um, district, um, which has fees and associated with probably, you know, they want to look at how they're going to pay for it. Um, most utilities or stormwater districts have utility fees. Um, so that's kind of the way they're leaning. I see that's the way the, way the county permit's going to go, and I don't see us necessarily following suit. And there's a, uh, the biggest reason I, I see us not following suit is because of everything we have done throughout the years. We have over 25% open space in the city. We've bought a lot of land. We've done the pond book in, uh, in conjunction with uh, Metro Parks, the pond book restoration of the whole creek corridor. Um, we had funding from uh, uh, Cuyahoga County, and then now the why we got funding from Cuyahoga County for the Laurel Creek restoration. So we've done a number of things where we have, and we did about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, a huge storm work between 20 and, and 15 years ago, 18 years ago. We address a lot of our major stormwater issues with detention ponds and control. We have flooding issues. We, we've addressed it. We've been proactive. So the Tinkers Creek watershed, what does it consist of? It consists of Cuyahoga uh, County, Summit County, and Portage County. Okay, you know, we're talking about the Summit County watershed district. The two communities, or the three communities in Summit County are Reminderville, Twinsburg, I guess it's one of your I guess it's four. And um, uh, Hudson. Hudson already is on their own separate permit. I don't see them joining the county permit. So that leaves reminder bill and, and the township. The other communities that have contributed up through us are Aurora and, and uh, Streetboro. They're in Portage County would not have any funding associated with any repairs needed there that would actually help the city. And then we go into Cuyahoga County. Um, and uh, address our flow there. I think as a community, we have done a good controls within our city, so we're not causing, aggravating new problems up there. Um, so if we were to join the Summit County Consortium of, of, of Stormwater, I don't see how it would benefit the city as a whole in, in joining that. Um, it does mean that we will have a few extra steps in our permit process um, and basically need a little bit more support uh, internally through the departments, because 
right now we, we, we on the on the 26 communities we're up there in the top percentage when we go by ourselves we'll be scrutinized a little bit more so the areas we might be weak on uh, we've probably got to step up our game a little bit um, but why you aware of that so if we go back a second to where I started the conversation with the proposed study I think we end up addressing a fair number of things in the NPDF permit stormwater regulations by, by starting to look a little bit more at our system. So I don't know, Sarah, if you got anything you put on here, where do you really want to look as far as I would like to, to try and put about 50000 in my uh, professional service budget towards starting the inspection and review of the sewers. Um, it would be new money into the budget. I just want to make sure that I'm supported with the knowledge that you know, we can end up with expenses of, you know, that we know about, I think that's better than having a problem. Amy, do you, do you anticipate if you, and obviously I won't hold you to it because you don't know what you're going to find, do you anticipate that the things you might find would be things that have to be done right away, or are they things that you could, once you're aware of them, you could say, okay, we'll put this into some sort of a future, I, I guess what I'm Okay, so in, ask. Yeah. in the 50000 I would probably use so much for videotaping and cleaning with a contingency in there so that there's no new money for heavy cleaning, which basically puts a, a cutter through mm -hmm. the system. Because we have found, like on Waldo Way, they actually had to do an emergency dig down there just recently because roots had grown in and caused some issues with uh, service connection for an individual house. You know, they got their connection fixed associated with that, but then we still had some issues and problems. So I think you're going to get... Um, root intrusion and that type of stuff at least cut back. Now the problem is you cut it back, there's still root intrusion. You're not solving a long-term problem, you're just keeping the system so you have time to react to that. Um, what you would have to jump to a little bit is if you did find an illicit, detect, uh, illicit discharge, um, which could be a cross connection, uh, we would have to program in that pretty fast to, to get rid of that Ill yeah, that, that if okay. there's a sanitary cross into a storm or vice versa. A any, any ballpark of what Typically one of those cost. homes would cost, I think they've been running, depending if it's a short site and you don't get in the road, it's probably about 5000 if you get in the road. It could be up to the cost of 10000 We do repairs associated with road through service department right now. Um, I don't know. They do absorb that in their regular budget, some of those mm -hmm. repairs. I don't know how many or what we would find. I do know when we did... Um, some studies when we were dealing with drainage in certain areas, we did some smoke testing before in the past, and I think we we covered a lot of cross connections. But I'm not going to tell you okay. we're, we're not going to find. That's any. fine. And this is all underground. This is not. And this is all stuff that yeah, I don't have laser vision. Okay. So, you know. But you're talking okay. about you found roots in storm sewers. Yes. Really? Wow. Good material. Do you know of anywhere that you have major sinkholes above these lines? That that is something that you can't see from on top of the ground. You know, if, if you've got some major sinkholes. I have suspect I haven't gone trudging through. We're pretty good in the, in the road right away, but we do have a fair amount of system that's behind properties um, wow. that may not be reported um, associated with behind properties. Now, we do get people that do call in and say, I have a sinkhole, and then we go out and we do sensor maintenance, and they do a, a water die test and what have you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of standard every year. We I don't know if they do about 10 of those a year or whatever. Okay. But again, those need to be reported. I don't necessarily go, I don't have anybody going out walking all Looking of our home. lines. Like like you would on a gas line for leaks. You know, it's not yeah. quite Could, the same. Chris is going out. I just identified one um, off of Firelands. So, and... Uh, what did you find? What, what, a sinkhole. A sinkhole. sinkhole. Yeah. So it's next, it's kind of halfway through the yard. It's next to the driveway. It's sinking. It's just... I mean, there's um, a lot of these developments, it's common, like I have to do mine about every four years or so, bring in something to fill in, because that where that, that lateral runs from the house, it just starts collapsing and collapsing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, a lot of the builders back then would just bury kind of anything. It's one of the issues we had up, um, is it Stone Creek? I think Stone mm -hmm. Creek was right up, yeah. yeah Stone Creek was one where it was kind of falling off, it was just right? falling off, and you know, and you know, city tries to give as much advice and help, and I know Amy's been up there talking to him, but it's a problem that dates back to when it was all all built. Um, but um, but our guys will go out, service first looks at it, and then sewer maintenance would go out and they could camera it and try to help detect. 
if it's just, you know, ground sinking problem or is it some issue with the pipe? You know? I have a question. So how the public works feel about 50,000 net sheets at once? Um, I think it's better to try to get ahead of the problem. Yeah, that was the conversation we had. Is I, I'd rather us not have uh, yeah, emergency projects. Right, right. They're no fun. They're supposed to rain. They're no fun. Yeah, they're no fun. So I have a question. Yeah. So uh, what? Which would we assess um, residents that are affected or that they have to pay for it if it's like? It's, are we only talking about the stuff that's in the city line? In the in the in this, I'd be looking at looking at the the city line for inspection. You know what you'll see when you go down a city line, you might see the, the the individual resident lateral come in, and you might see roots coming out of that. We'll let the the individual resident know that they've got possible condition. Uh -huh. uh, we have done that on other jobs where we've done full replacements, and then we basically say, you know, we tied in, but. You're full of, you know, this is this is the limits of where we go. You know, you're going to want to have to take a look at your stuff because you could eventually get a backup because you've got roots in your system. So, ten minutes. <laughs> we have ten. Okay, we're going to go through real quick here. We, that sidewalk. <coughs> yeah. um, so next we go to um, Ohio Public Works funding. So we have Dorwich Water Line. We basically pushed that back. It was supposed to be a 2021 project. Um, we moved it back to 2022. This is one that could possibly be uh, it's a water infrastructure project that was moved associated with COVID, so it could go after some of those COVID funds. There's another question is, do we even go, it's a, a loan project instead of a grant. We don't know. Usually they don't let us use SERP funds that are already programmed, um, but that's another discussion we'll be having with finance on there, so it may be 100% funded by the uh, COVID, uh, depending on how that works out. But one, you're aware of that and it's still on the schedule. Uh, I did find out Today, that White Oak and Birchwood area, the, the section of road that was in the older development, they had the concrete very much like Ashdale. We applied last fall for funding. We did apply for a grant for a portion of the funding, and we are on the list to receive that grant, um, and that will be coming out in July. Um, so we'd be looking at that being moved into the construction schedule. We'd also then research the entirety of that road, both those roads, even in the other section, so that it was a complete project. Wanted to talk to you a little about new applications because I'm not sure if they're going to have the funding cycle in June or July, but wanted to get ahead of it so that you can see legislation come through. We're looking at Ravenna Road Sanitary, which is that downtown area that I talked about earlier, between State Route 82 and State Route 91. In 2019, we did Ravenna Road from 91 up towards Tinkers Creek or the Plaza area. Now we're looking at going from that location, 91, down towards 82. Uh, it was previous line within situ form. We had issues in that line. <laughs> and the other thing I'd like to apply for with the issues in the funding, and I'm not sure how this is going to score or rate. Um, we had the emergency repair on the um, galvanized, big galvanized pipe coming out of the golf course last year. We did the first run or the section that we knew had issues. Uh, just based on the size of the pipe, the volume of water, the velocity of water, uh, knowing that it's corrugated metal pipe and there is um, some rusting at the bottom, we're looking at getting, trying to see if we find money to line this, starting at the other golf course pond, I think on hole three. Uh, first project would go from there up to uh, Glenwood. The reason why we're cutting the projects is a certain amount of funding, maximizing my funding dollars, getting it done, as well as expenditures every year. Uh, looking at putting an application which we call phase two in this year and then we'd be following out the phase three which would go from Glenwood behind the uh, uh, Hawkins him at the area and we have to do it in that section because that's basically the way we're going to have to pull that line up because it's one size pipe and the way, the way it moves through there um, so those are my Ohio Public Work applications if, you, if you're going to see that if there are any questions on possible funding here okay did I skip something Oh, okay, AMAT's funding. AMAT's funding, uh, Ravetta Road. Ravetta Road, we had applied for in 2017. We reapplied in 2019, and we did get funding that was programmed in 2024. Uh, AMATS has been selling projects at a, a, a slightly lower or under their program money because nobody did work last year, so contractors are all hot for work. So they have extra money. Um, they've asked to slide projects up. Um, so we now are programmed into 2022. 
Um, so we, we committed to going ahead and doing that to help them out with that. Um, the other program that's program we've been talking about, Shepherd and Ravenna Road intersection, and that kind of lays out the schedule there just so you're aware we will be doing something on that. Now back to AMATS. AMATS, because they have extra money, is going to do a special round of funding. Ding, 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 ding. Um, so typically they would have funding this fall, and it would be for 25, 26, 2025, 2026. They're going to do it uh, because they move projects all forward now. They have some surplus money, and they also get have some other money coming in. So they're looking at a special round of resurfacing applications. The reason why they're doing resurfacing applications, typically resurfacing has no environmental concerns, which is your NEPA process, and they can get those their shovel-ready projects for the most part. Um, you can prepare the plan specs and get it done. So looking at what's eligible, um, it's a federally functioned classified roadway. There are some pavement condition index that AMAX puts out. There's ADPs that AMAX puts out. Um, and then there's what's called the, your, the city's priority project. Uh, what we would get is our fair share. We get ranked on that uh, associated project. There are two projects that um, are possible for funding. One would be Cannon Road from Ravenna Road uh, up to Liberty Road, and that's where our functional classification ends, so we can't go Liberty down the other way. Um, and the second one would be Highland Road, the section that's in the city from State Route 91 to Haddon. Um, what I'd be looking is putting our priority project, because we get extra points, is being Cannon Road, um, and uh, putting that in 2023, putting Highland Road in 2024. If we don't get funding in those cycles due to numbers, we would apply again in the fall and try for the 25 and 26. Um, now, with the caveat, Cannon Road, we've been pushing off some storm sewer work. We would have to move that up into the 2022 budget because, as I said, we can't have any environmental impacts with the AMAX funding, and they won't pay for the drainage anyway. So um, we moved that project up. We had originally did that in 2020. We postponed it. We did not put it into 2021's budget, but we will be putting it into the budget. And then just so you've got an idea of projects that are on the shelf, we have the third lane winding project that's kind of on the shelf. We're not looking at going after any funding right now. Uh, we move forward with that project. We did some more old service, school entrance, you know, drive and stuff like that. So it's kind of on the shelf at about 80% complete with the roadway portion, but it still needs environmental docks and right away and, and things like that when we eventually start it back up, um, which we can use AMAX funding for, so we don't want to advance it any further. Um, we have the first mile, last mile quarter so, uh, connectivity study on the shelf as well, which is trails. We kind of discussed trailheads with Chris. Um, there are two programs that are existing trails that um, I think uh, we need to be considerate in the next few years, and that Center Valley Parkway has never been, uh, Bikeway Trail has never been resurfaced since so starting <coughs> to show somewhere. Um, and then we also have the bridge over um, at East Idlewood over the Tinkers Creek that is in. Uh, not such great shape. So those are going to be. Is know. that the bridge right off the parking lot by the ball yeah. field? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and that's. I think I had some rough costs on that. That'd be about one hundred twenty thousand dollars to replace it. Um, and then we're not advancing any feedment, which is your floodplain mitigation area. And, and uh, next, I can kind of show where the floodplain map shows that it kind of encumbers the East Idlewood. And then an update on private utilities and right-of-way permits, which now engineering has kind of overtaken some of that stuff. We've got about 60 right-of-way permits open right now. Um, we have been, and there's communication stuff coming and going. I know there's been questions on 91, a lot of calls. I think that's, I think there's going to be an MCI line. We have not received the plans by post road and heading down through the ledge areas. Um, but we were able to get a hold of Ohio Edison with 26 locations. Years are not all the locations where we have double poles. This is what we were able to inventory in a short period of time with people coming and going. So this will be a filler project. So don't expect, and there's stuff that just went in last year that it's going to take months before the five other utilities um, move off that pole. So we, we, we're not really going to start counting them until this fall when we have more time to look at it. But Ohio uh, Edison committed to removing 12 of those poles within the next three to four weeks. Windstream told me they would be out this week to review seven locations of those poles. So that's 19 of the 26 that hopefully we'll have some movement on here in the next month. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions for Amy? Okay. Okay. Are you talking? Are you talking the light poles? You know, on the last page. 
You know, I'm talking the power poles with all the lines. What you'll see okay. is um, two poles, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the wooden poles that go up, maybe within three feet of each other. Uh -huh. One doesn't have wires, or maybe has one wire on it, maybe has three other wires on it. It's halfway cut, yeah. but they just sit there. Some have been there since, I think, when I talked to the Ohio Edison guy when he started researching when I gave him all the poll numbers since 2013. So they get, they get forgotten. Yeah, by, they do by the, they uh, the utilities. So um, we're we're actively uh, going to be um, seeing if we can get some removed. Okay. Well, who handles the light poles? You know, the street lights. The st who does what with the street lights? Yeah. Who handles that once the lights go out? If the light goes out, there is a, a number. What, what is it? One eight hundred. It's an Ohio Edison number to call. Do you need lights light or something? Yes. So do we? So. I would call if I'm writing, if I'm driving around and might see about maybe five or six or seven, then I would You would need, need an address or, or a poll number. So if, you, if it's in front of this address, you can report. I think that's the way you report it. Mm -hmm. They might have a poll number. Um, very, it, it will get attention that way. Um, again, that's not my problem. Uh, if they call it in, I, you know, I don't know the service department is somebody's a lot running around uh, right now. Yeah, are we? Yeah. Are we mm -hmm. talking about street lights? Yeah. Yes. Again? Yes. Okay. okay. I'll read for the email that's got all the links. You can do it all online. They prefer that the residents report it because they have an account number. With that account number, they have exact poll, location, everything, right as the resident does it. Okay. Is that on the web page? Um, it is, uh, is what on the web page? Our website? The number, the number is right. Greg, we got a question. Right. I think that they are, but um, I will double check. Amy, Thank you. I, I just have one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I, so we've had several power outages relatively recently. Is there is there anything in this, and if the answer is longer, we can talk about it later. That's fine. Is there anything inherent to the way our grid is built? That, that allows for us to have lots of power outages? You know, uh, there used to be lightning strikes up at, because we used to have power outage at the uh, uh, pump station up at Liberty mm -hmm. Road, and we used to have lightning strikes in the area, and that always took that out mm -hmm. years ago. Then we got rid of that, and now we moved to, to move that station out of there so we don't have those issues. Um, you know, I know they had high winds. Mm -hmm. you, Twinsburg was, I don't live in Twinsburg. I lost power in my neighbor's life. Right. I mean, so everybody loses um, on, on big events sure. just because they, they cause issue. They're pretty good about getting things back on depending on, on what the issue is. Um, I did see, somebody saw some flagging over by the, um, I think Ohio Edison has some sort of uh, station a, on Liberty. Okay. Yeah, there's I, a, I knew there was a transformer some, that went out on Saturday night. Yeah. Some flag. It looks like they're doing something study, okay. so I don't know if they've got some replacement stuff going on there okay. in the future. I just didn't know if there was anything, like I said, kind of inherent. I, I saw after, this. After the latest outage, I probably had six or seven people reach out and say, hey, we, we, lose, we lose power a lot in Twinsburg. I don't know what that, you know. It's, it's so, all relative because it's not really a lot in yeah. okay. other communities. That's okay. Thank you. Nothing else. Okay. Very good. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for all that detail. That was very good. Thank you. Bye, Amy. Anybody have yeah, unfinished new business or any miscellaneous? No, sir. All right. What's that? All right. No. Any unfinished? No. Anybody? Okay. No expert members. We will adjourn the meeting. The next meeting will be June 8th at 6 o'clock. Adjourn. Thank you, sir. Stay away, Joanne.